So yet another metaphor that we're going to use here for interface is this idea of an abstraction barrier. Um, and what does that mean? This is a term that comes up in computer science. So you're going to see it. Um, so let's think about it. A barrier, right? Um, a barrier separates things, right? Uh, An abstraction indicates the type of separation, right? So the idea is that um, there's there's some information that's not allowed to flow across this barrier. Um, and so what does this mean? Um, and, and here's the, the fundamental idea. And then we'll look at, at some other uh, documentation that'll help make this clear. If I use the comparable interface, let's say I take two objects that are comparable and I do something with them, like write a function that computes the max. I don't care how your class implements compare to. That is not my problem. That's the barrier, right? So, you know, there's me on one side of it who's using comparable to implement sort or max or whatever. And then there's you on the other side of it that's created a new class, wants my algorithms to work for your class, but needs to implement compare to properly so that things are sorted or searched or maxed appropriately. There's the barrier, right? Um, and if this works, and it does, that barrier is quite solid, right? We don't have to communicate. We don't have to coordinate things on and be like, okay, well, how, tell me exactly how you implement a compare to, uh, you know, what does it return in this case or whatever. We don't have to do that. We can just start with this contract. Um, and then the contract itself sort of establishes a barrier, right? So it's like, you know, you and I don't have to communicate with each other at all in, in order for this to work. So let's look at some code that actually uh, uses, um, and I'm going to look up the, array, the arrays utility class in Java 14. So this is an example of code that uses the comparable interface. And so let's look, let's go down here, blah, blah, blah. Um, we've got this binary, let's say by binary search. Okay, so this is on objects. Um, and then let's look at where's the sort methods. Do, 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 do. Oh man, there's so many down here. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. I should go faster. Uh, all right. Um, and so uh, let's look at um, let's look at the sort method. Um, okay. So now this is a little confusing, right? Because it takes an array of objects, not an array of comparables. But I want to point out something. So this is a general purpose sort method. You can pass any array of objects to it. But what does it say? All elements in the array must implement the comparable interface. Ah, okay, so what I really need here, and, and sort will enforce this, we'll see in a minute, um, is everything that I pass to sort actually has to be comparable. Um, I'm not exactly sure why the method signature isn't different than it is, uh, but that's how it works. So, you know, even if I pass something to it that's not comparable, I'm gonna get some type of error. Um, and the reason for this is that sort, in order to work, it's gotta compare stuff. And so if I pass the things that aren't comparable, sort has no way of working, right? If I don't tell you, if I give you two instances of a class and I haven't explained to you how to compare them, then I can't sort because I can't figure out what comes first and what comes second. And if I can't sort uh, do that, there's no way to even bootstrap a sorting algorithm, right? Think about sorting two objects. It's essentially figuring out which one goes first, which one goes second. If I can't make that decision, there's no way I'm gonna be able to sort 10 objects or 100 or 10,000, right? So. Now, here's the, here's the big deal about this, right? Somebody wrote the sort method. We could find the code for it. It uses compare to. Someone wrote that a long time ago, okay? You don't know them. I don't know them. We could probably figure out who it is. There's probably some comment in the code somewhere that would identify them. Some human being wrote this algorithm. We are about to write a new class that implements comparable. And as soon as we do that, this code will work. The reason is this powerful concept of interfaces. And this connects code across space and time. Again, I did not have to collaborate with the person that wrote the sorting algorithm. They don't know me. They don't know about my class, right? They, I don't know, they, you know they, they, don't, they don't care because we have this barrier, right? They're on one side, I'm on the other. We've got this contract we've all agreed on and that enables this incredible synergy, right? Where code written by somebody that I don't know that knows nothing about my class can do useful work for me as long as I bring my class up to this interface, this barrier, and fulfill my end of the bargain, or sort of uh, implement my part of the contract. So that's what makes this so, so cool, right? It's like we've agreed on this common interface, and now all of these different classes that don't know anything about each other have a way to meet up and do useful things together. 
right? And this is not limited to just sort. I'm just using this as an example. There are other methods in here that will do things like searching, right? Uh, we already wrote an algorithm to compute the max and you could do the min and you can do all sorts of things. So the fact that a class becomes comparable and implements that interface and shows other classes how to compare two instances suddenly unlocks all of this code out there in the world that's just waiting for you to provide that method. And as soon as you do, it works. You've uh, fulfilled your part of the contract. You have sort of come up to the other side of that abstraction barrier, and there's all sorts of cool code on the other side waiting to meet yours.